Hello, and welcome to this presentation on the solar eclipse that will be happening in Illinois and around the world on Monday, April 8th, 2024. My name is Dr. Natalie Rosine, and I'd like to talk to you for a few minutes about what to expect on this momentous occasion. First of all, for those of you who don't know what a total solar eclipse happens to be or need a little refresher, is that when it actually happens to put the sun, the moon, and the earth directly in a line. And when the moon is actually orbiting, it completely blocks out the sun and then casts a shadow on portions of the earth like we're going to see on Monday, April 8th. So every state is a little bit different, but for this solar eclipse, the solar eclipse will reach totality in southern Illinois. It's going to start there right before 2 p.m. and it's going to last approximately 4 minutes and 9 seconds. With our spring weather and the eclipse, if it actually cooperates, we are likely here in St. Charles to potentially have some darker skies, cooler air, and the potential to actually see some other celestial bodies like planets and stars happening in the sky. Even in St. Charles, where there's going to be about a 93.1% totality, there are definitely going to be some impacts that are going to be visible at the end of 7th, 8th hour, and even after school. So let's talk a little bit about that. All right, the eclipse timing here in St. Charles, we're going to take a look at this animation and scroll down. All right, is going to start at about 1250 p.m. That is three minutes after seventh period starts at St. Charles North High School. And you can already start to see that the eclipse is having some effect as we move through seventh hour. So it will start to actually get a little bit darker as we move closer and closer to that 93.1% totality. As long as we happen to get good weather on this date. You can see now in the simulation that we are about, you know, close to the end of seventh period. So we are hitting kind of our passing period between 7th and 8th period. And then we are moving into right here 8th period at the end of the day. So we have people who will be leaving our building who have unscheduled 8th. We will also have a fair number of students, the majority of our students, that will still be within um, our 8th period class as we get very, very close to that 93.1% totality towards the end of our school day right around um, kind of the you know 205 to 210 period and then as we're getting ever so close now to the end of our school day you will notice that the effects are still not full where we can see our sun so now we're actually looking at school day ending which means that it is still going to potentially be a little bit darker outside when we leave school, when we board our buses through the end of the day. The entire time that it is going to take in our area for the sun to potentially return to normal is going to be right around 3.20 p.m. So one of the safest things to do on Monday, April 8th, is to make sure you have a pair of ISO approved glasses and you could just sit and actually view the eclipse from the comfort of our very own parking lot and then leave safely once it is over. However, if you cannot do that, we're going to return to our presentation and we're going to continue on with how to be able to view and view the eclipse and then get home safely. There are some classes in our school that will be viewing it, others will not, but things just to keep in mind no matter who you are, right? First of all, do not look at the eclipse without those ISO approved glasses. They are available for purchase from many sources. You do want to make sure that they are ISO safety certified, um, but you could potentially bring them to school and wear them to look at the solar eclipse. 
one of the other most important things is to not to try to take pictures of the eclipse without an approved phone filter, right? This is not a filter that is built into your phone, but this is one that you would have to purchase outside of the filters that are already on there for your pictures. If you look at the eclipse or try to take pictures of it without a phone filter, you will fry your phone. And then you do want to be educated about it, which is why I'm coming to talk to you about it today, because everyone is going to be curious. This is one of the coolest things that we actually have the opportunity to see, but we also want to make sure that everybody stays safe so that they can enjoy it and that we're following all of the rules that kind of go with viewing the eclipse. Like I said, you want to make sure that if you get yourself a pair of um, glasses to be able to view the eclipse, that they are ISO certified. It's really easy to actually check on the um, kind of at the very ends of the eyepieces that are provided. Um, if you'd like to get your own, they're about $3 a pair. And then the phone filters that you can actually use with your phone in order to take pictures are about $9 to use. All right. Other things that are definitely going to impact our day um, on April 8th. One is you are actually leaving the parking lot. All right. Especially if you happen to be driving, watch for pedestrians that happen to be near, like it says, eclipse viewing areas. Many people are likely to pull into our parking lot because it is a place where you could nicely view the eclipse. There are also many neighborhoods around our schools where people might pull over to be able to do that, which is going to impede traffic. So watch for pedestrians, be prepared for traffic and congestion. So even more so than what we have on a daily basis. So go slow, take your time. You don't want anything bad to actually happen. If you are leaving when it is still semi-dark outside, please turn your headlights on, right? Do not take photographs while you are actually driving in your car. Don't wear your eclipse glasses if you happen to have them. Don't look directly at the sun and don't look through any of your mirrors at the eclipse trying to get them. All of these can cause um, very severe eye damage and we don't want anything bad happening to you. If you want to pull over and actually watch the eclipse, please don't park along any shoulder of our roads, all right, or our highways. Exit the roadway entirely and find some sort of parking lot or neighborhood in a safe area to be able to watch whatever happens to be left of the eclipse. All right, please stay safe, have fun, and enjoy viewing the eclipse on Monday, April 8th, 2024. Thank you for listening.